So very good morning. Though here it is very gloomy weather in our Santinikatan area. It's very cloudy. Uh, at the very outset, let me welcome you all in this online board. Today is the day fourth of our five-day national level research academic skill development program, which is being organized to pay our homage, Indian Elias Luminaries, that is father of Indian Library Science. He is on the eve of 132nd birthday anniversary. And it's our regular features to arrange this type of session every month by collecting different stalwarts from all over India, not only academician, not only library science background people, not only library professionals, but also academia in general. And basic aim of this program is to excel the quality of academic and publication as well as research activities and its output too. And this time, though I have tried many times, but could not succeed. But this time today we have with us, one, I think most of us, he should be addressed as grand teacher because he is teachers of my teacher, if I am right. So Professor Lakshman Rao sir is my grand teacher in one way. And also he is mentoring in many Indian LIS academician as well as library professionals. And I have a good luck that I am under his umbrella and getting many valuable inputs, advice, suggestions. Whenever I seek before him, he is kind enough to give me. More than that, I think if I'm not said this, then I would have some wrong in my part. Every month, if not every week, regularly he will take a call about me, like many Indian allies professionals from where actually it is being established that we are literally studying communication theory, communication channel, information transformation like that. But to me, Sad is the right person who is, by considering the age is simply a number, attitude and mentality is the main issue here. And he's taking Indian abroad, many LIS professionals like his son, like his beloved scholar, like his beloved students across the globe. So this beauty, and that is why I invite Sir and request Sir to have one online lecture. And I'm very keen to invite him in my campus and physical in future course of action. But I'm eagerly for that day. And when I ask Sir, please give me some input to introduce before the gathering. I think from my part, it was very uh, foolish uh, seeking information or question to him. After having this kind of seniority and exposure, he does not require any more identity to explore in this board. He himself is a brand of library science. He himself is a good teacher of library science. He himself is a good advisor of library science. So this is the enough to him. And Sir said me, Dr. Saha, you just introduced me, retired professor of Osmania University. And at the most, you can say president TSLA, Telangana Library Association, like that. No, no other things. So from here, we can also understood that good things have a little introduction and have a little exposure. So that's why by His Excellency said, advise me not to say many things about me, rather you just confine these two sentences that I am this and this, no more. So sir, it's my privilege to have you in this online board and I'm lucky enough and many times I am with you on different physical uh, seminars here and there and I listen your keynote speech and many sessions. It was overwhelming to me and whenever I found you and I'd like to be a student today also in this session to listen to you attentively and try to try to input something in my mind so that I will go ahead tomorrow onwards by inputting in this 
session in my future course of action. So with these few words, uh, let me allow to invite you by your excellency to address the gathering. And I would like to seek your kind permission soon after the session is over as virtually and this real time, many academics, in spite of their having intention to join, but they may not able so that and to address them, we are just recording this session and soon after the session is over, with your kind permission, I'd like to upload this video lecture in our YouTube channel so that across the globe, people will be able to listen this from this channel forever, anytime as they choose. So I think that you will allow me to do it. And yes. with these few uh, sentences, I won't have any much uh, intention to spare the time. And let me now request you to take the session with your valuable inputs to all of us. Thank you, sir. Floor is yours. Uh, thank you, Nimai Chanji, uh, for your kind words. Yeah, you can go ahead uh, with the recording. There is no problem. Uh, after all, this is an academic activity. There is nothing like a copyright for us. <laughs> right? <laughs> now, a uh, question is, uh, when we uh, talk about library science education, I, I'm, I'm, tr I'm trying to say something on library science education in India. Now, library science education has a big history, so starting from two, 1911 to 12, Central Library, Baroda, WA Board, and we all have heard about it. That's not a, there is no meaning in the, uh, repeating that. But the most important, uh, what we have to remember is, uh, uh, first thing is Andhra Desha Library Association School, which was started in 1920. And the second is the important key point is 1965, where UGC Review Committee, under the leadership of Dr. Ranganathan, then 1979, UGC panel, where uh, uh, UGC 1965, Ranganathan, 1979 uh, recommendations of the UGC panel, and then 1992, uh, Cur Curriculum Development Committee, where Professor Kavala was the chairman. And 2001, Karishi Dappa, Professor Karishi Dappa was the chairman. This is also Curriculum Development Committee. Now, the question is, what happened in here? They went on uh, discussing, reviewing, assessing the situation, what is happening in the library, library field. They identified what has to be taught and what has to, how you have to put the combination. Right, they recommended. And at the same time, what happened, you know, especially when I talk, when you talk about the latest one, 2001, they recommended 85% to be mandatory and 15% you can modify as per your local requirements. Now, 2001-23, you have seen lots of changes have taken place. And the changes is because of the technology. Now, what is happening after all, what we do, uh, library science education is basically to go to the library and serve the people, users. So the changes that are taking place in the library field uh, that has to be also learned at the departments. Now, this technology, especially last two, 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 two and a half decades, the, the situation has totally, almost, I would like to say, majority changes have come in every, every subject of library science. But the question is, after all, what is our objective of education? You have to learn the skills, concepts, and so that you can execute the same thing in the library area. Now, earlier, I'm sure if you remember those, those old days uh, curriculum, it was teaching something else. And now we have, we have almost 70% have changed. And why, why we want to change it? The reason is the technology is providing better facilities. And we would like to use this technology and provide the best possible services. And you just look into the evolution of the paper. Initially, we have seen patchment, vellum, and then ultimately paper. Now everything is a digital, digitization on digital mode. So naturally, the, the information that is being stored is also changing. The medium has changed. Now the second is, today, every 12 hours, the uh, information gets doubled up. So imagine how much information is coming to our, our uh, purview. So we have to handle so much of information and we must be able to provide the required relevant updated information to our users. 
then look into the development of different type of sources that we have seen, like reference sources. Our encyclopedia, etc., is one side. But the databases, earlier we had a print databases like chemical abstracts, uh, phys physics abstracts, then the social science abstracts, etc., where people used to sit for hours and days to identify the articles uh, that are relevant to their research. And of course, it is not only library, but the research activity also has changed. It has changed so much because of the technology. So now what happened when the changes take place, it becomes a challenge for the departments and also a challenge for the libraries. And if it is only the library, library science, when you learn, when you are equipped with the learning, then it is possible for you to go and work in the library. Unfortunately, what is happening? We, we are not in a position to have a cohesive relationship between the library science uh, uh, teaching and library practices. Now, why you may ask me why I, I'm, I'm giving a damaging statement. I think it is true. The reason is there is a pressure from the publishers, right? They say they have introduced a new 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 methodology. They have introduced a new technique. They have introduced a, the application of the technology new 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 environment. So what happens? The libraries are forced to use, but the teachers are not in a position to get updated. Unfortunately, this is the major one of the major issues that the faculty are not updated. What I learned 20 years back, 50 years back, still I want to continue with the same thing. Because I, I have, an, unfortunately, I have an experience and I have an association with more than 60 universities. Whenever I went to the board of studies, people are not supportive to get updated and get trained. This is an unfortunate situation. And what is happening at the same time, the new techniques are coming in. Every, every week, every month, the new techniques are coming in. And that means it is in a dynamic situation. In this dynamic situation, if you want to make your products saleable, if you want to make your products who can work and serve, serve in the library, it is very, very difficult unless you train them. And the question is, when you, once you talk about the education, you take a look at the medical, what happens? They go for house urgency and they also go to the morning and evening teaching. But what is happening with us? We are teaching something which never, which, which is not seen by the uh, students. That means the practical component is missing. Missing or at, at very less level. So naturally what happens when, when the component is missing, they will be able to theoretically what, the, what they will be able to learn. What they will be able to learn. So naturally, now the, what is happening, the products who are coming out, they are not in a position to uh, face the challenges that are supposed to be there, to work in the library. So therefore, the LIS education deserves a lot of changes, a lot of things. Now, the basic objective, as I said, we have to provide service, we have to handle, we have to also deal with the people. That's why it, it's the component earlier, we were never talking about the management. Today, we are talking about the management to be included as a part of the curriculum. The reason is you have to lead, you need the leadership qualities. You have to work with the people. And that is that is where you, your management techniques also start up. So what I'm trying to say is the first and foremost thing, uh, issue that we have to look for. Okay, let me, before I go there, I let me discuss the present issue. Take an example of cataloging. How many schools, how many library science departments are teaching copy cataloging? I'm talking about the practical hands-on experience in handling copy cataloging. If I'm not wrong, maybe two, three universities are teaching, but otherwise no institution is teaching practically and hands-on experience of how do you handle cataloging, I mean, copy cataloging. And what is happening when you go to the library, now, to save the time, the, to use the technology, we are no more tech, We are no more uh, practicing other things. We are only uh, copying cataloging is being practiced. Now, still, what is happening? We are teaching classified catalog code. We are teaching AACR. We are uh, teaching A code. We are talking about uh, ALA code. Why? I understand if you want to, historically, you can deliver a lecture or two. But why are we practicing AACR till? Similarly, classification, right? Why are you why are you why are you teaching uh, colon classification? You theoretically you teach something, but why are we teaching colon classification? Today we are talking about uh, uh, reference sources. 
what is how how we should teach them how do you collect the information that is what we call information uh, information literacy where you will be able to help them in identifying the information earlier we were talking about encyclopedias uh, who is who these sources you you need not spend too much time i'm trying to say what i'm trying to say you need not uh, spend too much time you have to teach them but you have to give them an outline but what is happening today we are not talking about anything on in, in, in information literacy information literacy where they will be able to understand what is available how do we identify how do we search how do we assess assess and then how do we make use but well, this is a very important uh, steps but unfortunately we still we are talking about something which has happened about 150 years ago which is not relevant take an example of classification we are not practicing uh, even udc also most of the cases now dc when you copy catalog the number is coming in and i will give you most difficult most important thing is today we are all almost all the libraries have gone for automation right we use metadata people don't know what is mean by metadata they do it they say data about data what is data what is this data what is that data and we don't know the standards we are never taught in the classroom what are the different fields what are the different standards and what are the core elements we never teach but once he comes to the library he has to practice the metadata uh, standards and what is happening whatever you learn acr to or acr is waste so what i'm trying to say i'm not saying you ignore but give them a background story and the other day i have seen um, some of the classification schemes even when i was a student i learned only historically like for example bliss classification in one of the class in one of the uh, syllabus latest syllabus is bliss classification what the teacher knows about bliss classification will he be able to learn and will he be able to uh, share to the students it is not possible so looking at the environment there is we have to change our mood we have to change our attitude to see how best we will be able to mix up the old and new old is uh, i'm not saying they are useless but you have to give them some historical background or some outlet but you need not spend too much time today what we need is for example is many people you know they they use the automation but they don't how do we how do we install right and that is installation is a very important even though it is a very small thing but it's a very important thing so when you talk about the installation or when you talk about the create uh, standardization using the metadata standards because you don't need all the fields for example in a public library you may not need all all other details except author title and publisher we you, you can just ignore other things so therefore what is happening the teaching methodology not teaching methodology but teaching what you are teaching curriculum you have to change and you take an example today earlier we were talking about the searching of the databases today where is chemical abstracts it has gone right and new 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 thing has come up in in the in its place right and now what is happening we are talk, we are able to use the discovery uh, software and you can search all the databases in one go and who is teaching what are the open access resources and today you take an example of oa.mg which can give you 250 million articles free of cost similarly pdf drive which can give you about 90 to 93 million books how many students are learning this how many how many librarians are practicing this so what is happening once you don't learn you also become a, a liability in the library there are people who are i'm not saying 100% but there are people who are really doing a good job but unless you give them training unless you motivate them to learn in in the schools it is not possible so what is happening first and foremost is uh, what are you teaching and i would like to say that generally you have to identify the curriculum and teaching methodology these are two things in the curriculum what are we, what are we what we, what is that we have to do update the curriculum and now here a big twist comes up all of us we want a, a net has to be passed and when you want to net the net passing you have the syllabus for the net and unfortunately net syllabus is still outdated they are not changing i have seen you know the the small elements which are being practiced by every library they don't have uh, in the net so what is happening they are forced to learn only things 
and people are afraid of revising the syllabus because the students may not be able to get through the uh, net. So that is another UGC is also finding fault. I mean, you can find fault with the UGC and they take every subject, you know, like library science. And what is happening, library science is not just library, which we deal with every every aspect of the knowledge, every every discipline. And when we want to deal with every discipline, naturally we, we have to also learn how we will be able to learn and how we will be able to handle all those things. Now, today we are, we are talking about the Scopus. How many people know what are, what, are the, what are the services provided by Scopus? And one of the most important is, if you can ask them, they will be able to give you the related articles, wherever is published related to your research. And how many, how many are able to guide the scholars? So therefore, it is not just learning, but you have to also teach the students attitude, how to help, how to handle the users. This is very important. Unfortunately, we are not doing that. We just take a classroom and we go. And you also know that the open universities, I'm sorry to say that, some of the universities I know in one of the universities, 500 people sit in one hall. Somebody speaks in the mic. It's a private university. And what happens? They, everybody gets 70%. Now, when they go to the job, and now what they will be able to do job? Those who have influence, they get the job. And those who are sincere, they don't know. So the, unfortunately, what is, what, is, what is all this? This is because of the no, no non-control. There is no control over the education system, especially library science education in India. Neither UGC worry, nor the library associations are worried. I know library associations don't have power, but still they can make things possible by representing to the concerned uh, uh, governing agencies like UGC or EICT. They, that, is, that is one of the most important things. Then at the same time, there is a one important uh, con uh, component missing is we have no libraries in the schools, most of the schools, except corporate schools and maybe Kendra Vidyalaya. So they don't know what is library. They don't know what to, what, to, what do you do in the library. So we have to educate them where once they come to the degree, intermediate they don't want because they're preparing for the engineering, medicine, agriculture, etc. Once they come to the degree, they are not habituated to the use of the library. So they don't use the library, the degree also. So now the question is the librarians have another responsibility. How best you will be able to make them to visit the library? How best they will be able to make use of the different resources so that they get updated. Unfortunately, this, this environment is not being created in any of the colleges. Those who are coming from good schools, they go to the library, but those who come from the government schools, they don't go to the library. So now what is happening? Immediately they say, you are spending so much money and unfortunately nobody is coming. Why do you want to buy the books? This is another, immediately the governing uh, bodies or principal or the governing uh, agencies say, why do you want to buy the books? Now it is it is it, it is a catch twenty two situation. Either one side we want to the library, second side we are not in a position to make them to use. So this becomes librarian becomes uh, the most important key person to make them how best you will be able to attract to uh, library. This is there are different ways and me methods are there, right? I can give an example in one of the institution. I asked them to uh, put on the notice board everything that is coming, like you know, uh, moral exam, right? or uh, any article unrelated to the subject on the notice board. The students used to see, and then they used to come to the library, I want to see more information on that. And uh, another important education system is the teacher teaches uses the same textbook for last 15 years, 20 years. And what is, what is happening with that? They want only the textbook. They don't want other textbooks. You have so many uh, books on, uh, let's say, vertebrata, invertebrata, or uh, in 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 uh, physics or chemistry, in organic chemistry, organic chemistry, but they want only the one textbook which is recommended by the teacher, and it, because the teacher is not updated naturally, most of the teachers. I'm not talking about all the teachers. They are not updated naturally. The student also suffers, right? Because the, there is no challenge for the teacher. There is no challenge for the student. Nobody is taking the challenge, and naturally it is creating an impact on us. The librarian can motivate the teacher. Librarian can motivate the student to read more read the letters, and that, that is, we, we have to practice certain things, right? It is the, out of the box. It may, you, 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 never, you are never uh, teaching them in the library science department, but you have to make them to learn how you will be able to attract. Generally, I say, it is the knowledge is with the librarian, right? And uh, the, you are going to be, the student is going to be, after the education, he will become a librarian. And what he will do? 
so much of knowledge and nobody is coming. You get frustrated. So how you will be able to attract? This is, you have to also learn, teach them. You know, there are a lot of things. For example, I was telling them, you ask them to, why why red carpet is being put in, why not green carpet when a, when a VIP comes? Ask them to search, right? Give them a small gift. Those who visit to the library regularly, you give them some small certificate at the end of the year, right? I also put them some quiz, right? And in the, in the process, for example, if, you are, if he is looking for an invertebrate textbook, uh, then you can say, okay, all of you look at the invertebrate textbook, which is the latest book, identify, you will give a prize. So what happens then he, when he looks into the invertebrate uh, books, he will be able to identify one of the book as latest. And that means they say, oh, so many books are there. We are struggling for one book. This is, this is how they'll be able to do that. So therefore, it is not just doing library work. It is not just practicing cataloging, classification, and reference service. There are a lot of more things are there, right? And which we are not teaching, which they are not learning, and it creates impact, right? And another important thing is, today, we are able to talk about the credits and the uh, national education policy, and earlier also, we were talking about giving a course or a paper to other departments, like political science fellow will come and do one library science course our economics fellow they come it's a common course and uh, in this common course it will be helpful to uh, learn uh, combine both the library science political science economics and where you have to impress upon them how the libraries are important how the libraries can improve their knowledge and unfortunately we are doing the, we are offering a paper which we don't know what we, what, what what is that plan and there is no such as a regular, frequent uh, correct plan and we are doing something or other. Similarly, do we have standards? As I was talking about CDC, Curriculum Development Committee, now they recommended, but today after 22 years, there is nothing like that. So what is happening? Every teacher, every department wants to do whatever the, the way they want. I have seen several, I'm sorry to say that, you know, in, in several interviews where, we can, where, where I go as expert, I'm able to see that minimum things they are not able to say. Minimum things, especially in, in terms of related to the technology. Now, why? The reason is they are teaching their paper, that's all. Other than that paper, they don't know anything else, right? So, so I, I wanted to change the attitude and the thinking of the teachers towards this curriculum development also, but they don't want to change. They say one reason is uh, learning. Why? Who will learn? The new thing. Second is that net exams. Now the question is, when you want to have the quality, naturally you have to look for good curriculum, teaching methodology, good faculty, right? Good infrastructure. Now, how many institutions are having DDC sets, right? And I know many universities, they have purchased earlier, now nobody is buying it. But how do we teach? Unless one set is given to every student, how can we teach them? Unless they look at it, like an example, you are, you are the doctor is being told, you, know, you take the injection, take the medicine in that, and then hold the hand and then push the, push the medicine into the hand. If you say like that, can you do that? No, unless he handles it practically, you cannot do it. Similarly, ours is also a professional course where you have to learn theory, theory with the practice. So therefore, that is very important thing uh, where we have to uh, think about uh, uh, practical Sorry, one minute, please. One, one minute. Sorry. So, naturally, we have to look for how best we will be able to change the curriculum first thing and they change the curriculum frequently now take an example we are we are using the open open university course material in most of the universities what is happening they print and for 10 years 15 years there is no change and when you look at the last few years how many changes have come in the library science library practices right so the practices where you have to keep in touch with the libraries keep in touch with the 
changes that are taking place, uh, then ultimately you have to think about how best you will be able to change the curriculum. And when you change the curriculum, the teachers must be ready to teach. The teachers must become more competent. Teachers must be ready to take the challenge, right? Then the value of curriculum change comes. Then another important thing is, how many of us we have a qualified and competent teachers? Today, unfortunately, take my own department, there is no teacher, full-time full teacher. This is the, almost, almost all the country, except central universities, one single teacher, two teachers, two teachers or one teacher or no teacher. So somebody comes and speaks something in the classroom and goes away. There is no assistance. There is no help. So naturally, what will you do? How do how the teaching uh, uh, will be a qualitative? It becomes very difficult. And uh, another most important thing is the infrastructure. Unfortunately, as you know, as I, I gave an example of DDC set, right? Or shares list of subject headings. Right or anything library of some of us we have not seen library of congress subject list at all subject heading at all we have not seen the physically never in the life of the of course uh, fortunately we have our department has two sets but i have seen most of the majority of the departments they have never seen in their lifetime library of congress subject heading list so what is happening without seeing either neither, neither, neither physically nor uh, virtually we have not seen and ultimately how do we teach so this is one of the most important uh, uh, drawback. And another important factor that we are facing in the li library science education is accreditation, or we are talking about quality, right? Earlier, uh, the, the University Grants Commission was fixing some norm. See, you have you need so many teachers. But these days, in the, when you go to the NAC, the teachers are not, number of teachers are not taken into consideration when the NAC is taken. So what is happening? They are paying very least salary. For example, 10,000, 15,000. How do you expect a good teacher to come and work for 15,000 or 20,000? This is one area. And the second is we don't have any accreditation like a US organization, US or UK, where ALA and CLIP has made certain standards, especially accreditation. So because of lack of accreditation, now we have MBA has an accreditation, right? So AACT takes care of that. Now, what is happening in some of the universities, just you write the exam or you submit some document, you get a PhD, and all of you must be knowing that. So the these very important factors influence on education is accreditation, which is very important for quality assurance. And another thing that we have to carefully examine in the library science education is we are not giving a practical hands-on experience. This is a very, very important factor. Why, you may ask me. As I told you, an example of installation. But today, you talk about the Mendeley. You talk about the end note. How many of our departments are teaching it? Right? And how many of libraries are organizing programs for the research scholars? So when you talk about the researcher, so what happens in that case research methods we should know it's not because we have we are doing research but if you know the research methods you can help them today when you talk about the research uh, researchers what you can do you can help them in literature survey you can help them in writing the content because what, what is the content writing? You have to link them with the latest information that is published. You can help them in searching the information. As a student, if you learn, the library library helps. And library helps means the teaching is necessary. And you have to also know what are the sources, where the chemistry articles are available, and where, which, which are the journals they, they subscribe, what are the open access journals, and what are all these things have to be taught in. And unfortunately, what is happening in the research methods? Uh, when you talk about the research methods, uh, we, we don't know what, what is the uh, implication of the literature survey. The in literature survey helps us to understand what are the practices that are made, what are the inputs that have been made, what are the idea, what are the infrastructure that has been used, what are the procedures that have been used, and those procedures, how far they are going to be useful to us. This is what is the basic purpose of the 
uh, literature surveys. And also at the same time, whether what is the gap in the subject and on the basis of the gap, you have to identify the topic or theme for the research. So this is how I'm not saying research methods you have to teach just because you are doing research, but it is because you learn what is or what are the research methods that will help you to uh, learn how you will be able to help the users or research, research scholars. That is very important. So in that context, as I was telling, content you can help them, whether you publish in journal or textbook or any book, any source, you can help them to identify, right? And then another important thing is references. What are the references? Where do you get them? What is the citation? How do you write the citation? What are the standards of citation, right? And how do you write them? And how do you make use of the technology, like, as I said, mainly and EndNote? And another important thing is plagiarism. This is everywhere, everywhere, you know, UGC standards are there, everything is there. We must train our students to understand what is plagiarism, how do we check, what are the standards of UGC, and what are the practice, what are the different uh, softwares that are available to check the plagiarism. How many of us have the syllabus about plagiarism? We don't know, no, I'm sure no, no university has that. So what is happening with research? When you talk about the research methods, we, if you know what, is, what are the different research methods and what is the purpose, then you will be able to help them in identifying the resources, writing the citations, writing uh, identification of the uh, sources for your content writing, right? All these things are possible. That means uh, the teacher gives only the subject for the researchers, maybe botany, zoology. But the librarian gives a lot of things for writing the research activity. As I told you, in language, today we are talking about language. There are a lot of tools are there. Now you can have the uh, free language tool also, right? That everybody knows. Now why I'll give one of the example is a Quillbot, right? Quillbot gives you different uh, types of uh, services. You like an example in you know, a translation, plagiarism, uh, paraphrasing. Right, and uh, making the uh, abstract, re uh, reducing the uh, size of the uh, abstract, increasing the size of the abstract. Then similarly, uh, we all know the uh, language uh, tool like a grammar or uh, presentation uh, tools. And we can see an example in a Grammarly, right? Now, I'm not saying you have to buy even if you don't buy the basic structure, these things nobody teaches in the classroom. Because like a, a political science or a botany teacher teaches only the subject. And how do we go research? But you, 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 the librarian actually becomes the main source for teaching all these uh, uh, tools. And uh, as, I, as I said, this is another important thing is uh, we, we will be able to help in uh, developing the institutional uh, connections. As I said about the Scopus, you will be able to understand the link the institutional or scientist level connections, which is very difficult for a, a, a teacher of other subjects to know. We can help them. So naturally, what, what is happening with that? You will be able to see that the you, you can this by teaching the research methods. And not just research methods, means we are, we are, we are, what we are teaching is a survey method questionnaire uh, method of uh, collecting the data, right? That is not important. That is important at the same time, how you will be, what are the tools that are being used? How we will be able to uh, know what, what, what type of resources are helpful? And those things also have to be taught. It is not the questionnaire method, you make the question, it should be legible, uh, those things are okay. But you have to also understand how are we going to collect the data, right? Then another important area, we are talking, the moment you talk about the management, we talk about the uh, issue system, we talk about the stock verification, right? And uh, when we talk about this, we forget that we have to teach them something on leadership, strategies to be followed, how do we plan, how do we make the budget, how do we advocacy, you know, library advocacy, and how do we handle human resources? You know, these days, uh, handling human resources is very, very tough, tough job because they come from different uh, backgrounds with the different forces. And how do you handle is very important. So certain techniques have to be taught to them. 
So what is happening when you look at this? The paper is management, but what we are teaching is a issue system and a stock verification. Uh, those things we are teaching. But are they helpful? They are useful, but at the same time, you have to think in larger term. Now, the another important question comes, can we teach all these things in two semesters? Uh, sorry, two years. Very difficult. Right? So, we have to understand where we have to reduce the content, where we have to reduce the size of teaching, and where we have to give more emphasis. This is where the balancing up comes. As I told, you know, talking about the classification schemes, you give one lecture, give the historical part. But when you talk about the classification and the cataloging now, you give them hands-on experience, like, you know, you're about metadata, about the um, copy catalog, etc. Now, we don't, if we don't balance, what is happening? And when they go to the library, they are becoming very, very difficult for them to work. Now, another most, most important is uh, internship. Unfortunately, some of the universities I have seen, in the morning they learn and in the evening they go to the library. Nobody goes to the library. You have to give them at least six, at least six months, if not six, three months, internship program to work in the library in different departments. What happens there? They will interact with the users. They will interact with other staff members. They will also see the resources. They will also see the equipment using. They also see the technology being used. So what happens? They will get definitely some, some sort of confidence to work in the library. So this has to be part of the uh, library science education. Just like medical education, what we want is we are what we are looking for is the um, uh, what you how surgeonship, right? So the similar things is very important. And I have seen some of the cases. I'm sorry, unfortunately between semester to semester, two weeks holidays are everybody goes home. They say it is internship. That doesn't help, right? So very important is internship is very, very important, whether you make it a part of the degree or not, whether it is outside the degree or within the degree, but it is essential. We can't just do that, do away that. Then another important thing what we, we, we can look for is the library, uh, when, when, you, when you talk about the library resources, see what is happening if you take an example of central universities. They are... Last year, instead of one crore, they have given 50 lakhs. Now, they are not in a position to purchase the databases. So, what we need is networking. Right? What is this networking? You have to understand how you will be able to network with the scholars. You have to, we are, I already told that. You have to know how, to, how do you network with the institutions which are doing the research in the same area. But now you have to network within the libraries. Right. As you as you know, the, the cost of the uh, sources is increasing enormously. Uh, when you are talking about uh, increase of the uh, cost, it is not possible for any institution to pay all that particular amount. So therefore, what is happening? How best you have to make the networking like an example, somebody wanted some information, someone asked me, then I asked uh, uh, um, Indian Statistical Institute, Calcutta, Mr. Kishore. And he gave, Dr. Kishore, he gave, he sent me the information. So this is what networking, either within your city or within your state or with, at the national level, you have to level, develop the networking. So you have to learn certain things. What is your networking? What are the purpose? How do you do? These things have to be told informally in the, in the library science education. Because there is this lot of things which may not be part of the curriculum, but when you handle with the people, you have to know Wow, these a lot of things, how, how best you will be able to learn. Then another important thing that we have to look for is this, as I was talking about content. Now, even today, everybody says uh, electronic library, electronic resources, and they don't know what is the difference between digital resources and electronic resources. And uh, they, there becomes uh, very, very uh, difficult. So in that context, uh, uh, we have to be, we have to tell them the jargon also, and uh, then in addition to that, we have to also teach them, tell them, uh, speak if necessary in our Indian languages, right? And uh, so that you know, because once they go to public library, they have to work in the public libraries and use their uh, regional or local language. That is where 
the uh, necessity comes. So therefore, and there is also what is happening today, you are able to see, there is a four-year diploma in Madhya Pradesh, five-year degree in, I think, in, in, in uh, West Bengal, right? And uh, most important is now NEP 2020 says, after one year, you make a bachelor degree, you give it, right? But I don't know, some people say it is not applicable to the master degree, but when you talk about the master degree, after one year means within one year, if you give a bachelor degree, you must be ready to work in the library. That means you have to, when you design the syllabus, you must understand what are the core comp competencies required in within one year. You have to teach them so that you will be able to work in the library. Now, what is happening because of the wrong planning, the person after one year, he will not be able to work because you are giving emphasis on certain things and uh, no teaching in the first year on certain things. So the planning of the curriculum is also very, very important. And that, unfortunately, we don't have a clear idea. Then another important thing that we look for is the uh, copyright. And we have to tell them what is the copyright. And when it comes to the digital resources, we all know that there is also different uh, structure is there. For example, when you give an uh, undertaking that you will not copy, I uh, mean, you will not be able to download more than five pages. Right, that is electronic digital uh, resources. Then th these things, there are also restrictions. E even in the open access resources, also there are different things are there. Right. So there are what are what are these things? You must uh, explain. Right. And then only you will be able to tell the student uh, uh, what 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 is what what happens, what is not. Another important factor is the teaching methodology. What we are we are teaching in the classroom and going away. Are we really interacting in the classroom? And that is, and another important thing I would like to say here is, please involve the librarian. Librarian is also teacher of teachers. Involve with the librarian because they have a lot of hands and experience. They will be able to tell them, they will be able to tell the students, how do you handle the people? How do you handle the information? How do you handle the equipment? How do you handle the technology? There is no need, there is no need to hesitate. I, I, whenever, wherever I am going, I am asking the university vice chancellor to make the librarian as the member of the board of studies and head of the department as a library committee member. The reason is a lot of things are happening. Now, take an example. I want to give a the funniest situation is nobody, most of them, we don't know what is preprint, right? Earlier, we, we when you uh, publish an article, you, they were supplying reprints. Today, preprint, what is it? Can we explain them? Print uh, is uh, the article may be published after six months, but the same article that is going to be published after six months or one year, you are able to see the same article in preprint, maybe with 10% uh, changes. What happens? The moment you write the article, you put it in the uh, uh, preprint pre uh, uh, portal, and uh, every, anybody can use it. After the editing, the article is published. And then it becomes copyright. Once it is published a copyright, you can't, unless you subscribe, you cannot download. But whereas in preprint, it's free of cost. So that means the article which is going to be published after six months or one year, 90% of the content which is same is available for you. How many of us are able to publish? There are about 80 portals are there which handle the uh, preprints. And unfortunately, I have seen many of the universities, whenever we meet, we interact, they don't know what is a preprint because it is not there in the syllabus. So when you want to accommodate in newer things, you have to sacrifice old things, right? And what, how far you will sacrifice is a major issue. Will you sacrifice total? Will you sacrifice partly? Right? This is actually, this is a big challenge for the library science education. Why? Because the changes that are taking place in any uh, subject field, what we call universe of knowledge, that has an impact on library science, right? And the technology that is coming in is also has an impact on the library science. And the attitude of the people, there is an impact on the library science people. And uh, the changes, the curriculum changes, new education, national education policy changes, that has an impact on the library science. Funding, that has an uh, uh, impact on the library science. So what is happening? We ours is uh, what we call organic situation. That is, go on changing from time to time. Are we ready for that? Are we, are we getting mentally and physically emotionally ready to accept the changes? Unfortunately, no. So therefore, what happens? 
we are teaching something they are going to the library librarians are murmuring about the students but ultimately slowly they learn some of them they learn some of them they don't learn some of them struggle right see the question when i am making comments it's not applicable to everybody i'm talking in in majority right so library science education deserves a serious look in terms of several things before you as i told you know if you take an example of mba an mba graduate after 2 years he becomes a specialist why can't we become they what he does in the first year they have a core subject in second year they learn only two subjects either finance or hr marketing etc and they become master can we not become we can but the only thing is we have more subjects because of handling technology practically right but still we can do it can we take that as an example and then learn core subject in the first year and it specialized in the uh, in the second year is it possible to learn every every topic every topic every area every subject in library science no i definitely you cannot become majaka fall master of none and when you go to the library you can't work so therefore we our thinking should be first year we give the core subject little intensively second day by the time they go to second year certain things you give them just outline but concentrate on one or two or three right for example library automation you make that as a two papers and teach them once they go out they they'll be able to do it in similarly information storage and retrieval right so we have to also teach them what are what it's just open access we say open access it's not just resources how do you publish today we are talking about academic writing right how library can help we can help in lot way similar to what we are helping in a research so therefore what is what is what is happening here is are we ready to change get changed if you are not going to get ready change 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 there now already what is happening because of the remote access people are not coming to the library and there is a movement there is everywhere people say library science are nobody goes to the library why why should we spend money in the library this is another thing so go to google this is what everybody is saying google and tomorrow artificial intelligence is coming in and when you come to art, artificial intelligence probably they may not even look look for the uh, resources at all so for our survival generally i am asking about every library to organize a, a two day program as soon as the new academic year starts tell them what are the resources what we talk we, we talk about is uh, uh, this, this is this, this is what we are we earlier we used to talk library orientation Uh, now we are talking it as a information literacy right so therefore lot of things have to be changed in the library science education and let us look how far we are ready to change how far our faculty is ready to accept the changes how far our faculty is ready to learn and share the knowledge right today we are talking about every subject knowledge management we are talking library science knowledge management we are talking about digital library we are talking about digitization there is a confusion between digitization and digitalization digitization is a conversion from uh, print to this and digitalization is where you use a digital technology in whole office or in the institution for every every activity every procedure not just converting them right similarly you know we are talking about lot of myth, lot of terminology is coming and unfortunately we are not in a position to explain Uh, to the students because of lack of time because so many subjects we want to teach right and uh, and naturally what is happening uh, we are, i think we are failing in producing uh, quality students and quality education uh, maybe i am not saying 100% but at least 60% uh, they are not in a position to stand up to the mark so therefore looking at these things there must be as i said no there must be A, a, the teachers must be ready to interact with the users interact with the uh, librarian and then interact with with other authorities then try to look for what are the components that we have to put in especially in terms of curriculum right i i i i know as a teacher what we teach right i i i i just give an example before i end take an example when you teach motivation what they say motivation a non financial indicator motivators financial one that is not the important i just given a simple example first create an environment you talk to the students when uh, somebody in your house gets a 80% in the in the degree exam what will you do or in a school a child gets a 
eighty percent in the school. You all hug her. You give a prize. You appreciate her. You make a party. You give the chocolates. But this is first stage. But why do you do all this? The second step is to encourage the child to get more marks, more than eighty in next time, or at least maintain the eighty percent. Right? This is our your objective. Right? Then say, that is what what are you doing for that? To encourage her, you are giving the gifts, you are giving the dresses, you are taking the to somewhere else, etc. So second step is, can we do the same thing in any everywhere? That is where you talk about the motivation. What is motivation? When you you talk about the activity, then you give the jargon motivation. Then the third step is you talk about the general examples in the industry or outside. Then the fourth is you talk about the your your uh, uh, motivational practices in your own library. And the fifth is you interact, feedback, and react. Take an example. We talk about the money who work anything, hundred percent, but they don't give even a five paisa or one increment in any organization for the librarian. So what is what? How do you motivate? This is where the non-financial motivator comes. So therefore, teaching methodology, teaching technique, or teaching style it has to be also developed. Unfortunately, what is happening? People don't know how to teach. Like beard, etc. They they help here also. You, I think we have to give some orientation to the new teachers so that they will be able to handle the classes uh, with ease. Because the present generation who are coming as a students, they are very intelligent and they are um, they can handle the teachers instead of teachers handling the students. But students can handle the teachers with a lot of questions, lot of answers, and lot of critical assessment. So therefore, looking into all this, there is a a need for quick review and uh, look for every aspect. How best we will be able to change, modify, and update the library science education. This is just you know I'm I'm talking critical. Uh, maybe people some of them they don't like, but this is what is the truth. And uh, uh, you know we, we when we talk about the teaching also today. Unfortunately, what happened? For thanks to Corona and thanks to Open University, print books have come. Then it has gone to online learning. Now we are talking about digital learning. Now we are talking about the blended learning, and the latest is digital universities. So teacher interaction is also missing slowly. And you do something, um, some other place, some get some credits, you will get the degree in library science. So, but what is ultimately what happens? You will be missing a lot of interaction. So, there is a, in 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 such a changed environment. How do we survive in the context of the blended learning? In the context of the teaching, uh, <clears throat> digitally online teaching. How do we survive? This has to be thought of very seriously <laughs> for the survival of library science education. And we have to also see what is happening in the American American. They have certain standard. And these standards they follow, and these standards are given by ALA, and uh, these standards uh, also are part of the uh, accreditation policy. Without accreditation, you you don't get the job. In India, we don't have accreditation. Whatever the university gives the degree, degree that is all. So with this, uh, let me uh, put a stop here, and if you have any question, I'll answer. Maybe you, you you can also ask critically if you whatever you you feel comfortable. So thank you, sir. Uh, it's a nice. I don't know what kind of adjective I will add being a student of PU, but today I am really getting one more classes and get some sort of orientation in my mind. How to handle the library users? How to handle the change? Uh, though uh, the the topic was in uh, LIS education in India, but I think you are very tactfully, efficiently balance in between the library and library science, library service and library science. So it's a nice balance. So before uh, putting my uh, observation, let me open the forum. Uh, online participants, may I request you all to raise your hands through chat box. 
we will un allow you to unmute and you can share your views or you can interact with share that is kind enough to give some time to us and if you want to put any questions through chat box also you can text us we will take care about your questions so anybody please raise your hands we will unmute you to interact and to get your audio message audio voice so please Okay, so now before coming, uh, hello, anybody? Sumona, Sumona, something? Sir. Yes. Good morning, sir. Somna Datta from Jaipur. Lakshman, sir, wonderful, wonderful uh, talk we heard today. I just wanted to know uh, whether the Department of Culture is looking into the uh, policies made for the libraries in India, or is it Department of Education who is uh, uh, kind of uh, you know overlooking the uh, libraries in India? Because there are many small private libraries also. So uh, are they being regulated? And uh, that is what my opinion was, because we have very many small rural li libraries. So how does uh, they, how do they get into the mainstream? Thank you, sir. Madam, library science education, you know, the education is controlled by uh, UGC, right? And coming to the library, I would like to give you a funny situation. Uh, the minister, cabinet minister of culture is from my state. I met him three times, gave him a six-page representation. Like an example, National Library, there is no uh, director general. Recently, uh, one gentleman has been appointed. But last six, seven years, I think 19, 2015 onwards or 14 onwards, there is no director general. And similarly, Raja Ramona Library Foundation, two, three years, it was there. Again, they are now advertised. Now, what is happening is when I posed a question uh, to the Prime Minister office, they say libraries are part of the state, not, not the nation, nation, I mean, not the central government. How do they reject in, uh, I mean, uh, say about National Library? How do they say about the uh, Kanemara Library, Delhi Public Library? All of them come under the government of India. And you know, the, to, to develop a virtual library, national virtual library, they gave about 75 crores to IIT Mumbai. They have done nothing. And the time is over. There was an inquiry committee. They have no action. Right? You, you can, I'm sure you can understand that. And you know, today you take an example of Delivery of Books Act. If your book is 1,000 rupees, and if you don't give the share the, to four libraries under Delivery of Books Act, your, if you, they identify you, the penalty is 50. So what is happening? Only 20% of the books that are coming, supposed to come in delivery of books act is coming. They think, you know, libraries are ignored. One side they say knowledge, knowledge, knowledge. We talk about knowledge economy, everything. But when it comes to the knowledge, uh, the libraries are totally ignored. Then coming to the states, almost 20 states, 19 states are having library legislation. And most of the states, they are inactive. They are doing it. For example, except Karnataka, where they are getting a lot of money. And you talk about the Kerala, where they are also doing, uh, they, have, they have a different system of uh, management, where the people are associated. The system is running very well, even though the money is very less in number. And uh, coming to my state, for example, uh, the money says is collected by the municipalities, and that is never shared to the libraries. And uh, today, what is happening? They are ignored. And you write any number of articles. They don't care. They say, you Google is there. Google is there. This is, they have learned. Everybody has learned. And uh, what is happening today, where there is no seats in the libraries, because every civil service exam, group exam, they, are, they want a place in the library. Can you imagine if you have a, a building in your house, you, you, you have a building in Hyderabad, you don't need to rent to anybody. Put one table, one chair. If it is air conditioned, they will pay you 5,000 rupees, three to 5,000 rupees per month. You have to give them water, air, fan, table, chair. That's all. And ordinarily, they are paying 800 to 1,000 rupees. Why? Because they don't have place to sit and read. Right? 
So imagine they are totally ignored. And recently they had a festival of libraries. They want to establish 5,000 libraries. God only knows when it can be done. See, all these governments, they talk certain things in the public. They don't do anything. Therefore, unless we pressurize, right? Now what happened recently, about 25 libraries have been established by the youth in our one of two couple of districts. As a library science association, what we are doing, we are giving, donating the books. Recently, we have given last few months back, we have given 20 libraries books. And we are collecting some fund. We are giving some fund from our association. We are self, we are we are felicitating some of the librarians who are working. I mean, not in the government outside, those who are really doing it. And you, today, you, what is happening? There are uh, one one person is working in four libraries. I mean, manages Saturday in one library, goes to another library on Monday, fourth or third library on Thursday, because there is no staff recruitment. How the libraries work? Are we asking anybody? Education system is totally collapsed both under the state and central governments. I'm sorry to say whether it's a Modi or, or uh, other, other prime ministers or any CM, the, both the education and the libraries are totally getting spoiled. So therefore, it is unless we have the pressure, we will not be able to do anything. Yeah, any other question, please? One question I get in the chat box from uh, Anindita Sarkar. Can you please read? What is going to be the impact of the digital library in the future? And will physical libraries disappear due to the influence of digital library? Sir, one, uh, sir, may I? Yeah, please repeat, please. Uh, what is, sir, actually the Onindika Sarkar want to know what is going to be the impact of the digital library in the, in the near future? Will physical library disappear due to the influence of digital libraries? Sir, you are muted, sir. Sir, please unmute yourself. Uh, I will give you a simple example. In the state of Andhra Pradesh, the minister says, we have established 1,022 digital libraries. What is the use? We have, once you establish one digital library, anybody from anywhere in the world, they can access. They don't know the difference between automation and the digital. So first of all, we must be clear. If you have a digital library, it means the content is available in digital form. Okay? Right. Then what is happening? If one library is established, take an example of National Digital Library, Kharagpur. Right? You take, you, there are so many digital libraries are there, right? And these like, digital library, if you develop one library, anybody from anywhere in the world, they can see it. They can use it. That is the advantage of a digital library. Now, question is, what is going to happen? Now, in the, in the context of the technology, because of the remote access, now the digital libraries are going to take more priority over and physical over and above the physical uh, materials, and uh, you are you are able to see the change in the university libraries also. We are already almost shifted. You take our in terms of journals. You talk you talk in terms of e-resources. We have already shifted from physical resources to the digital resources. So the future is going to be the digital resources. But please, definitely, I am telling you, the physical resources will never become zero. The, and, but there is a study in, recently in UK and US. People are preferring the physical resources. Again, there is a U-turn that people are preferring and libraries are forced to get more physical resources because of the reason that it is difficult to read, difficult to sit at one place. I mean, a lot of difficult eye, eye problem. So people, again, they, they are trying to convert, change from uh, back to the physical libraries. But definitely... Physical, I, I, I want to give one of, one of the examples. I was uh, hearing one lecture by two eminent uh, uh, people from uh, US. They said when the printing machine came, they said the uh, people stopped writing. 
But did they stop writing? Right. The, similarly, digital libraries are there. They may progress. They may continue. They may give better facility, better better uh, access. But still, physical uh, resources will never go out of the libraries. This is definitely um, uh, a practical serious situation. I don't know whether I am clear or uh, if you want any more. More question? Bale? Hmm. Huh. Many schools, village youth want library near their home. How to address this issue? Maybe Kerala can help train volunteers in See, senior. I know. I want to tell you one thing. We have to make a study, and then learn their practices. Try to plug in loopholes and introduce in your state. Right now, what we are doing in Hyderabad and Telangana, we are encouraging the rural youth to establish their own libraries. Neither the state nor the center is supporting them. The youth is celebrating by themselves, taking the donations, etc. And especially in, in terms of civil services examinations or competitive examinations, the libraries have become essential in rural areas also. Any more? No, sir. Hello, sir. Who is speaking? Introduce yourself. Uh, myself, Sumi Chakravarti. <clears throat> I am a PhD scholar. I am a PhD scholar at MNU Nagpur. Sir, you have rightly said two things. One is OA, OA access or a preprint. Sir, in the era of uh, publication of the online platform, uh, it is that we have seen so many publishers, uh, publishing, or they are <coughs> allocated to the author to publish the paper within three to two, four days. Hmm. So there are so many consequences happened in the era of predatory publication or the uh, cloning of journals. So what is the consequences of that to publication of OA publications that you have rightly said earlier? Actually, you find inclusion of predatory journals in some of the databases also, like Scopus also, right? In yes. Web of Science also. It is very difficult. That's why what happened, you know, if you look into the direct open access journals, they made a policy. Unless you publish for five years, they will not include that as a open access journal. Now it has become a business. Now UGC has taken the right decision that PhD is not necessary for the uh, assistant professor scale. Right? Now what is happening? Otherwise, you pay 2 lakh, somebody will write. You pay 50,000, the articles are published, and then you manage Viva, and then you get the PhD, and they they don't know anything about the subject, right? That is what is happening. So unless there are checks, uh, it is not difficult. It, you see, the government cannot do anything unless the pay, people also participate in that. Now today, against you, if I get if I manipulate and get the uh, PhD, and uh, I I have a pressure, I can get the job over and above you, even though I have no knowledge. So you all know you know all these things. What is happening? More corruption in the country. Right and more money, money and power play, power uh, uh, game uh, mm -hmm. that is happening. Uh, and at the same time, the low quality of uh, day after the low quality. You know, engineering only 23 percent of the uh, graduates are eligible for employment. Remaining 77 percent are not eligible. They don't have because they don't have competencies. They are not eligible for the job. So looking into this, you, you I'm sure as a senior people, uh, as a librarians, you know very well. Uh, what is that we can do? And uh, unless it becomes a movement again, nothing can happen. I, I was Hello. I was yes. one, one second. I was representing uh, the government that uh, in the college, the degree colleges. Why can't they make after four o'clock free to anybody? Like make convert into public libraries. Give somebody five thousand rupees. Let them sit from five to eight o'clock. Use the library, the books, whatever the books, because they are government colleges. Why don't you allow them? Because after five, it is closed. 
from 5 to next day morning, 10 o'clock is closed. So you open from 5 to 9, 5 to 10. Let them sit and read. Give the 5,000 rupees somebody and an attender, he will sit there. Only thing is you grew. Then second important uh, submission I made is, uh, for example, we, in Hyderabad, there are a number of universities are there. A university student of Usman University, he lives uh, 30 kilometers away from university campus. Where he has a nearby, he has a two universities. Why don't you allow Usman University student to use Hyderabad University Library? Why can't a Hyderabad University Library student use the Usman University Library? Right? You don't, you don't give the book. Let them sit and read. No issue system. Why can't we do? I mean, then what happens? You are giving a facility. It is a government. All are public funded institutions. Why can't we do? I told so many, so many interactions in, in Telangana and also elsewhere. Nobody bothers. Right? Now, similarly, I, I was telling them, for example, we have a big ground. There are a number of colleges which they would have back ground. You lease them for a while. Somebody come once for a day, you will generate the money. Similarly, library also. Why can't you why can't you allow? Mutually, your student goes somewhere, somewhere, and that student comes to your library. You can sit, let them sit and read. Why not? I mean, there are you have to think out of the box. It is my library, it is my, I've only come, my, even neither your students are coming. If you look into the resources that you are buying, user statistics, it is damaging, you know. If you look at the user statistics, you will never subscribe for, for such journals or databases. I'm sure uh, Nima Chanji must be able to say, uh, react on this user factor, utilization factor of the resources that we are getting in. The user statistics are given by the publisher or the uh, vendors. Yes, please. Uh, <clears throat> so, uh, is there any more uh, question or observation from participant side? I think no. Is there was a chat, chat box? Okay. Uh, so, uh, sir, with your kind permission. No, before let... that, I, I want to say one thing. Sir, please. I'm thankful to all the participants who are sitting for last uh, one and a half hours and uh, thankful to Nimai Chanji and Vishwabharti for giving me an opportunity to interact. I, I, I thought of more informal rather than formal. Now, I don't believe in uh, PPTs in some cases because uh, it is a 360 degrees uh, subject. It is not one, one dimensional, it is not two dimensional, it's a multi dimensional. Right. If you give the PPT, it becomes unidimensional. And we just go on, continue in that part only. So therefore, uh, to the extent possible, based on the general topic, general discussion and general talk, uh, I prefer to uh, talk just like that without any PPT. I'm sure uh, whatever you have uh, gained from me, if you have gained from me, thank you very much. Otherwise, you are welcome to interact with me anytime. And uh, within limitation of limitations of the time and energy, uh, I did what is best possible. Thank you very much. Thank you to everybody, including uh, the institution, Vishwabharati, and also uh, Professor Rimai Chanji. Thank you. Uh, thank you, sir. So with your kind permission now, let me just substantiate some uh, questions or observation, whatever uh, uh, given by the uh, participants and you have rightly uh, clarified still uh, with your kind permission being your beloved students let me just uh, pay attention on some issues like whether digital library will remove physical library or digital resources will remove physical resources to me my for madam onindita that there are several issues for which i being a librarian believe that Physical resources and physical library and physical library and this trio was there, is there, or will be there. How? That's a close question. That's true. And why these physical resources, physical library and physical library will be there? There are several reasons. Out of that, let me say, a senior citizen. In Vishwabharati, we are having a user who is around 95 years age and an user who is just four and a half years age. Means not study. I mean, KG to PG, our university is. So a child to whom, if I give one story books, four pages, five pages at par with his compliance, 
I think he or she will be happy instead of giving him a laptop and computer and digital resources like that. Same to a senior citizen who is suffering from several eye problems and other health problems. So to them, if we give, even in my library, many senior citizen users are asking me, why Dr. Saha, you are removing that card catalog in the top floor? Please bring that. We wanted to go through that card catalog in instead of having this OEO park like that. Then the regional language resources is hardly available in the web society. Being English language is administered the whole globe education society and communication society. We are having 95% of the digitized and electronic resources on I mean, uh, e e English language. Okay. So let's come to the Bengali, Uriya, Telugu, and then Tamil, and then many other uh, Santali and Kogborok instinct languages. So that resources is not available. So that's at the gold and precious material to us. And we have to preserve that resources digitally as well as physically to disseminate our human civilization in future course of action. Further, do you think that if we open an internet-based digital library or internet connectivity to a prisoner library or a criminal, then do you think that he will read books without doing his or her underworld activities? So sometimes this internet and these digital activities is risky to make it open, and that is not wise for make it open to them. Like a patient, like a prisoner. So we have to have this physical library concept. And more than that, we ha I have one presentation that why shall I read? Within that, I found that there are 30 different health diseases will be removed if we have 30 to 60 minutes reading habit, be it silent reading, be it sound reading. Okay, and that is why in very many schools and colleges and also public library, we are propagating reading competition. That will actually help the students for their pronunciation habit and also their tongue will be very clear. So this is an indirect help to the health management also for future. Then if we say, and if we see in our university or many research institute or many university, that after taking downloading in the pen drive, they are running over a printing computer cafe and they are taking print 10, 10 pages, 20 pages because before the day of the examination, before the day of the thesis writing, they need to consult the hard copy A4 size printout, which is just our hardbound book. So this we need to have, but to me, this is left and right hand of the library. So in one hand, we need to have digitalization but digit or digital resources, electronic resources and ICTs. And in another hand, we have to have physical resources, archives to disseminate. So being a librarian of this 2023, 20, we have to have both the resources in our hand and we need to play a balance. So no, there is no reasons of oddness. Yes, this may be lesser, this may be, uh, lesser, but not zero. So library was there, library is here, and library will be there in the near future, along with our things. The thing is that, the crore soup is question is the basic thing is attitude. The attitude of the policymaker, the attitude of the government, the attitude of the academician, the attitude of the librarian, the attitude of the students, the attitude of the scholars, the attitude of the parents, the attitude of the society people. All this is a team game. I being alone cannot say whether the library will be there or not. All this is a team game. So all stakeholders need to sit together and try to find out what will be the future of the library. And if we wanted to restore the library, be it electronic environment, be it physical environment, we have to have clear policy, funding policy, recruitment policy. As Sir rightly said, that many of the Indian schools of LIS, they are having one teacher, two teacher or no teacher. And one university soon after its birth, they are opening library science program with a guest faculty. Do we think that we are catering proper education to them? This is this, this is not applicable only library science in many discipline, many subject too. So if it is the, 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 the aims and objectives of the education policy makers, then how can one librarian will say whether library will be there or library will not be there? So if education is just commercialized, if education is just quantified, as I said, that I being a scholar, I don't know what is that. I have to pay money and just have a viva, then I will get a doctoral degree. And rightly it is removed as a mandatory condition of doctoral degree from the mandatory qualification. So they are doing, they are doing, considering the current experience. But we have miles to go and there are many problems. 
right as i uh, thought that model recruitment rules is now asking that librarians assistant librarians and deputy librarians need to sit in uh, i mean attitude test general knowledge english mathematics reasoning we have to set in contrary in the ugc regulation we have our set for selection policy so same government ugc is publishes regulation and ministry of education published its uh, model recruitment rules then some university they are under confusing stage so if it is then how can we how can we assume that there will be a uniform rules regulation and other things so our policy makers need to invite us being the stakeholders being the ground worker then this policy need to be formulated and we will have a good morning at all good library future at all and of course i being a librarian we have to introspect i have to introspect whether i am carrying out my role as a librarian from 9 to 6 pm or not do i only pay attention on writing paper and getting more and more citation because we have to keep in mind i being a practice librarian i am basically survive to cater library services to my library clientele i am not the academician so this all need to be adhered so i am not uh, going to elongate it any more because my respected teacher is in the board so i am not saying any more said if i am saying anything uh, unwanted i think you will forgive me and this is my sincere apologies before you and that uh, this is uh, simply as you are on the here i am saying some of my opinion and today sometimes of the evening i will call you if i have anything wrong you please rectify me for my future course of journey so now uh, we are fragment of our today's session and may i now request my colleague dr sonod bhattacharya who is assigned to be the in charge of our shikha bhavan library that is institute of science to offer formal word of thanks sonod da i think you are on the board yes yes sir okay please take carry out your everyone a good afternoon at five day national level research academic skill development program i Shonad Bhattacharjee feel extremely honored to have been asked to speak on this momentous occasion and to offer a vote of gratitude on behalf of our Vishwavidyalaya Library Network. Additionally, I want to express my gratitude to our Vice Chancellor, who has served as our mentor, sharing knowledge and wisdom with us and developing our skill. Their unwavering support has been crucial to our development and success. in addition to acting as our backbone our register assisted in organizing this talk thank you so much to the administration of our university and all our well wisher for your constant support constant support and inspiration as we all know that saying thank you is a respectful way to show appreciation towards a person but this word would be less for our today's chief guest and speaker professor n lakshman rao retired ugc merit professor who is the president tsla telangana and is specially present to deliver a talk about status of indian elis education his talk not only give us knowledge about indian elis education but also taught us how to think like a library professional A special thank goes to our university librarian, Dr. Nimai Chand Sah Sir, who took the responsibility of this seminar to be a success. Thank you again to all the participant in this seminar, Vishwavidyalaya Library, Library Network team members, Technician team, especially Jishnu Mondol and Shomojit Mohadol, and my dear audience. It was big. It was because of everyone's hard work that has that this event was possible. Thank you so much. Thank you. thank you dr sonodda you are also uh, one of the uh, due candidate for having thank you for receiving thank you uh, sir thank you. now uh, let me also to somo madam somona datta yes sir yes sir so you are always sir we are not expecting thank you from you but we are expecting kind blessings for our future journey because we always wanted to have your big hands on our heads so that we will go safely so uh, thank you sir for giving us your valuable time and very thought provoking insights into our mind let's try to carry out in our future course of action so thank you very much sir with your thank kind you. permission bye bye yeah kind permission let us say bye bye and wrap up the session